like them. Well, I ain't gonna even get into politics. Them, you just did. You just did. <laughs> you, all the all the people saying you're not black enough. Hey. Guess what? There's no coming back now. <laughs> I've been following these guys for years. They have over 3 million subscribers on YouTube. Yes. You can go check out their dates. They're in Austin on, on uh, I think, October 7th, San Antonio. Go to officialhodgetwins.com. Follow them at Hodge Twins, and you can just search them on YouTube if they haven't been uh, silenced. Hodge Twins, glad to have you both. Well, thanks for having us. Look at those free plugs. <laughs> All that free promotion. I love it. Yeah, we can't. Well, we can't. Uh, we can't get enough of the Hodge twins in our household. Uh, though we can't say this on the record. So you guys, again, out of the ordinary, bodybuilding channel, not necessarily uh, in line with what we often talk about. But you've been hit by the YouTube demonetization apocalypse. We were going to meet with you when you were, we were in Utah, but uh, you know we got held up by the FBI. Um, now you got, explain to people who don't know what it is that you do on your channel and how you guys got started because it's it's kind of a new media success story. Yeah, wow. um, man, I don't know. We was uh, I was uh, working in an insurance company. It's called Triple A in Southern California, and I just got this idea. I was like, I went to his desk like, Kim, let's start a YouTube channel. You know, he didn't say it in those words. He said, let's be comedians. I was like, what? <laughs> comedians? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I thought he was smoking crack again, but. Yeah, but anyway, we we started a YouTube channel. We called it Harsh Twins. We were just pretty much just doing whatever, just random skits and stuff like that. And start it, it dwelled into uh, doing uh, uh, current events. Yeah, because to do comic sketches, you need more than one person. Yeah, yeah. and then when we did a comic sketch, everybody wanted to change all the lines. So yeah, so <laughs> that we was yeah, so we actually went into fitness, and that's when things really took off. For us. Okay, it so be just, before this started, you you guys were about 110 pounds soaking wet, and then you realized, man, we got to lift some weights and do our YouTube channel. I was about 250 pounds soaking wet. Remember <laughs> <fat. laughs> <laughs> And you started. Oh, yeah. and you started at Planet and Fitness. On. <laughs> I, I remember you guys started at Planet Fitness early on, which is the bane of my existence. Uh, uh, you know, uh, not 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 a big fan, but I remember you did a video on that. Uh -huh. I'm banned from Planet Fitness for life. It's I don't know if you know this. True story. <laughs> Actually, um, we uh, back in the day, man, we had a, a membership at Planet Fitness. The reason behind it was because when we worked at an insurance company, we got fired because we was cussing in the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to give up our 24-hour fitness yeah. um, membership because it was too expensive. It was like $25. So we went to uh, 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 Planet, Fit Planet Fitness. It was like 10 bucks at the time. Yeah. So that's why we had a, a Planet Fitness gym on the show. Yeah, no no squat rack there. Yeah, I was kicked out for going in as a, as a tranny. So that's actually a little whole, a whole little different, different re reason. This was they had the whole the whole men going into women's locker rooms, and so I just went in as yeah. a woman to Planet Fitness. They let me in totally fine, but by the third one, I walked in like Stephen. We know who you are. You're not allowed at any Planet <laughs> Fitness, <laughs> please, ever, please, ever again. Hey, hey but y'all got rights now, man. Y'all can use the bathroom now, man. They just pass all these laws. I well, I know, but the, apparently they knew that we we had a YouTube channel at that point. They're like, we don't oh. think you're being sincere, and I'm like, but I am. I am being sincere. I'm. Not not Steven anymore. I'm Stephanie. And it's just See, that is racism, man. That's <laughs> racism. Well, okay, speaking of which, you guys get a lot of crap. You just did a DNA test on your channel from the black yeah. community uh, for what is it? Yeah. Not not being black? Is that the is yeah, that the man, deal? Geez, happy now, <laughs> you be tripping, man. Okay, look, first of all, let me just put out that we're black. Lay down the foundation. Yeah, both lay my, down the foundation. Yeah, both my parents are black. Yeah. Now my great grandma, she was white. Yeah. Okay. She was a pretty young thing too. Got with that black dude. And that's why we're here. Yeah. But um we would say comments in our videos and yeah. like black people's like, you know what? I'm I'm not comfortable with this. Y'all not dark enough to be talking like this. And plus they say we sound like some rednecks when we talk so because hmm. we got a strong country accent. So they I sound like yo Sam is Sam, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a lot of, we talk about a lot of common ground with actually white Southerners and, and blacks from even like urban Detroit. A lot of the same same terminology, a lot of the same slang, and that be, that comes from basically sort of a, a common history here in the United States. Hate to say it, some of that not so pretty with the slavery, but we got past it. We're doing better. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, 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 that's a long time ago, man. Yeah. It's 2017. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, okay, so I don't know if I'm outing you here, but you said off air, you're like, oh, yeah, were you at the Ben Shapiro thing in Utah? So you guys are aware of him. You're, you're I wouldn't, fans, but you, you like some of his content? Yeah, yeah. I like, definitely. We, we definitely like a lot of his content. I, I watch his uh, stuff on YouTube and yeah. uh, follow his podcast. So I just like him, how he put uh, 
Those he, damn liberals put them in a place, man. It's yeah. like, yeah. Like them, well, I ain't gonna even get into politics. Them you just did. You just did. <laughs> you, all of all the people saying you're not black enough. Hey, guess what? There's no coming back now. Be, we used to be, uh, I would say, uh, liberal. Yeah. But as as we got older, I started to actually think more <laughs> for myself. So yeah, we like like right now we like I would say we're leaning towards the uh, the right. I got one foot in the right. Right. I got the other foot that used to be on the left side. I didn't pick that foot up. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're doing pistol squats on the right, and you haven't figured out where you land yet. Yeah, we just don't like how uh, liber uh, the liberals, they, they paint everything like uh, everything's according to race and stuff like yeah. that. It's like race. It's like they use an angle to like pe keep people um, <clears throat> stuck as being Democrats, you know? A bunch of race you know, pimps, that's what they are. Yeah, race <laughs> pimps. Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of race pimps. A bunch of race <laughs> pimps, that's what they be doing. Yeah. They be pimping them. <laughs> That's to totally, but this is, don't worry, this is, I mean, you'll get maybe this on your YouTube channel, they'll demonetize you, but we're fine. You can say whatever you want here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you've been hit, obviously, with you, I remember we, we met, I had been watching you for a while, uh, I'm not a bodybuilder myself, I've always been more of, you know, a stre strength trainer, so, you know, pr practical purposes, but we can get into that another time. But um, we, uh, I, you guys sent me a, a, a direct message saying like, yeah, man, we, we, we got demonetized, we kind of knew it, but you, that... That's pretty f***ed up, man. It <laughs> really happened to me, and it's like what we do is really pretty, pretty clean stuff. And every, it happened to us. Was that was that a part of kind of your your awakening process? Do you think you just saw the left trying to shut everything down? Yeah, that's that's definitely what they're trying to do. Yeah, everything's so PC nowadays. You can't talk about anything. Yeah, anything so. that's controversial, even if it's true, you yeah. can't talk about it unless yeah. you're a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> then it's just pushed everywhere. It's pushed in your face. I mean, yeah. every time I look at something, somebody's talking about Donald Trump. Yeah. I went to Australia to do comedy shows down there. Got in the cab. Dude said, hey, what do you think about your president, Donald Trump? I'm like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like an infatuation with this guy. And that's all yeah. everybody talks about. It's like, yeah, I'm like sick of it. You can't look at nothing. More fun than I don't even look at CNN no more. It's just bash Trump 24-7 or whatever. Well, I look at it because I want to see what they're saying. Oh, yeah. God, that's I look at it when Ben's over there talking. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Shapiro. Dropping the Moab on, uh, on yeah, Don got Lemon. He's got on his face as he's listening to him talk. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with these people? Hey, that's not what I said. He's all this oppression. I mean, I've been looking for all this oppression in the black community. I can't find it. I've been looking under rocks and everything. Have you been through what? <laughs> I don't know. Let's pick a weird. That's, that's oppression. That's not oppression. That's just plain old stupidity over there. Well, yeah, yeah. what? I, you know, it's funny. I actually, when I first moved to LA, I was in Inglewood. I was really? sleeping on a cot in Inglewood, and the guy, the guy's name was. Uh, I shouldn't say it, but anyways, black guy slept on his on his uh, slept on his floor. He's like, "You can stay here for a month," and four days in, we got into an argument over politics, and he's like, "You got to go." <laughs> <laughs> and I was sleeping out of an '82 Datsun that I bought from an, uh, a Cambodian named Sonny. And I remember, I, well, I've told this story because it was $652, because you know those Cambodians are so yeah. cheap. And then I, I said, uh, I don't have the 52. Can I write an IOU for $52? So really, the black guy kicked me out, you know, and I didn't hold it against the entire race of people for a long time. I got past it. The point is there can be some healing, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. There you go. There's no such thing as white privilege anymore. Black people. Black person kicks somebody out? <laughs> he kicked me right out. It was, it, and he didn't say that it was because of the political argument, but it was really pretty clear. And this was right yeah. before Barack Obama. And I don't, I, anyways, I won't even get into it. So let me ask you this. You do live shows now. Did you start doing live shows? Because you didn't start out as like stand-up comics. You know, I, I started out as, a, as an actor, then stand-up comic in my mid-teens, Owen Benjamin, who's often on the show, stand-up comedian. Um, was it more so because of the demonetization on YouTube and you found you guys have been pretty smart with selling supplements, doing a lot of live shows and diversifying outside of just YouTube. So you haven't been hit as hard. Did you always kind of think, OK, what's the next step thinking ahead? Um, well, we always wanted to do stand up. It's just we didn't have enough courage to go out there and do it because going from YouTube videos to stand on the stage and making people laugh with just a microphone in your hand. Yeah, that is no easy cup of tea right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. been my, my very first show, man. I was like hyperventilating. I woke up the night before. I said, let's call it off, man. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, because at this point, everyone already knew you. So if you go out there, it's yeah. like if you bomb, you know, you get about five yeah. minutes of grace, as Colin Quinn says. And then it's like if you're not yeah. making us laugh. So you didn't yeah. have the benefit of just starting and being a nobody. You started doing stand-up after you were known. What's, what's that like? Helped. It definitely helped. We didn't... Um, when we first started doing stand up, the the whole money thing on YouTube was great. Yeah, oh. I mean, I, we didn't have to do stand up. We wanted to do stand up because we really wanted to, not because yeah. of the uh, the money per se. But but thank God we did because since we be doing stand up, that's the only thing that's really keeping our um, heads above water. Still, yeah. as far as being you know financially. Yeah, we'd secure. definitely be in the red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would be in red. Well, then, all, then, then all your black fans would say, "Okay, they get a pass." Yeah. So yeah. thank God we did do that, and yeah, we monetized ourselves by selling clothing and supplements. And if it wasn't for that, I mean, if we would just rely on YouTube, man, I would be, I would have to go get a job. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then you get fired because I'd see your YouTube videos. They'd say, well, you're hired. Oh, wait, we saw your YouTube video on Steve Harvey. Uh, yeah, you're fired. You're unhired. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're immediately unhired. Yeah, we've all realized it's not Kay Jared here. He's, he can't be hired anywhere. No, I can't do anything you else. You can't go on college campus anywhere now without security. I cannot. After what you just did with Antifa. It's, uh, <laughs> I, it's sorry, we really wanted to meet up with you guys in, in Utah, uh, yeah. but, you know, the yeah. FBI slows you down when you have to turn yeah. over all this footage. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so do you deal at all in politics on stage? Here's one thing I will say: the right kind of has the corner on fun now. Like you said, because of political correctness, there are no YouTubers on the left who are. You're going, oh, I'm aching to see their stand-up show. That's going to be a rip roaring riot. You know, someone from the Young Turks. <laughs> oh, what will they say next? Ooh, I'm at the edge of my seat. <laughs> um, so, do you feel like it gives you a leg up? I mean, because you, you you don't care. The right doesn't care at this point so much who you offend. I've got to imagine that that's somewhat liberating for you guys, at least a little. Yeah, yeah. I, in our stand up show, we're pretty uh, stay clear. Politics. We we are pretty much well. We just pretty much tell a bunch of stories about us as being kids. And I got a killer Caitlyn Jenner joke. <laughs> Let me hear it. Let's hear. Let's, <laughs> they see I can't keep away my material, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, don't know, I guess. Oh, people. we go in on everybody. We go in on niggas. We go <laughs> in on uh, racism. I mean, everybody's nobody's off limits. Yeah, we just don't make it too political. Yeah, we just we come from a um, a good place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, how do you balance being on the road and obviously fitness, but you know, staying in shape? Do you just hit road gyms? Do you bring uh, do you bring resistance bands with you? What do you do? It's pretty rough when we do yeah. shows. Um, I would say fifty percent of the time we will hit the gym, but most of the time it's like after yeah. I do a show and the meet and greet. Yeah, I'm oh, yeah. wiped out. I want to go back to my hotel room. And, and I yeah. never, uh, we never realized before we started doing our stand up shows. Like when you're on stage for an hour. Man, it's like running a marathon. Oh, yeah. It is, it is taxing. And then sleeping in the strange beds and then flying. and yeah. Man, it is rough. I remember yeah. we did, uh, I think, 10 shows in California. Yeah, yeah. in five days. Oh, geez. Five, oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. uh, we had two shows back-to-back -back days in San Diego. Then before that, we were sitting some other cities. So... You had to get some stage legs. Does, does one of you get, uh, J Naki Jared knows this, I always have, uh, you know, th like, this is my, these are my diva requests. Stage, microphone, and for 45 minutes before the show, a green room. Because sometimes I'll do private gigs or I'll go on college campus, and they'll try to do the meet yeah. and greet before the show or something. Yeah. And, oh, and I'm like, it's happened no, when I've yeah, been with you. Yeah, it's happened when you've been with me, where people are coming in, they're pitching sketches. I'm like, listen, I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to be a jerk, but I need 45 minutes just to be by myself, focus, because it is exhaust. Is one of you more cranky than the other, or are you both just... Uh, I imagine you two like velociraptors in the kitchen in that Jurassic Park scene, just constantly biting at each other's necks. You know what? Um, when we come out on stage, the fans, they, that energy is so high, it keeps us going. Like, it's been, what I found to be very important when you're touring, you need a nice hot shower. And when you show up to your show, if your fans are like, you know, lit. showing you love, they lit, I mean, it keeps you going. If you walk if you walk into a show, I walk into shows, people seem like they're tired. Oh, it could be a drag. Yeah, it just sucks. You, so as you... The first couple of jokes, you know if it's going to be a good show or not. Yeah. And I'll say a joke and it doesn't hit. I'm like, well, I'm running through these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Some crowds is just, and, it, and, and it's, it's kind of weird because 
Oh, you froze again. Oh, I froze? Well, you know, Hans, huh? so, yeah, if you just shut... Is it... <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What happened? This is what almost more stuff? funny for the show. Yeah. Can you guys hear me or no? Yeah. I don't even think they can hear me. There you go. Oh, all right. You okay. can hear me? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I had that actually. Yeah. What, back in I my... forgot what I was going to say. I got such a... That's okay. I can, I can do the host okay. gig and I can... I can I you again? Did I freeze <laughs> There we go. There we you go. probably right. hear us somewhere. Huh? I, yeah, yeah, we can hear you the whole time. So uh, <laughs> just, you know, but act like we can't. That's better for the show. I uh, I had that for a while when I was young. I was, I was 19, and I won a MySpace comedy contest. It was called So You Think You're Funny. And you know what the prize was? I got to perform with Black Boy, Two Eyes, and Bruce Bruce. Oh, and, wow. Really? And so I got That's to open proud. up. With, yeah, no money, though. But just imagine me. Opening up for Bruce, Bruce, <laughs> yeah. and Black yeah. Boy. How was that crowd? Yeah, <laughs> that crowd. That crowd was okay. I realized none of these jokes work, and I just joked about how white I was. And I didn't realize yeah. this. Being in the, the racial healing, I had to introduce Bruce, Bruce, and I would introduce him. It was like any other stand-up show. I'm looking around. I'm thought like, well, I'm thinking like, oh, he had a heart attack in the green room. Like he's not coming out. He's dead. He came yeah. out with an entourage like Mike Tyson, and he walked out slowly, and it would have like you know blaring hip hop, and he'd have a full entourage, and he would take a minimum of a minute and a half to get to the stage and the light would follow him so i'm just this lone white kid 19 years old like, yeah yeah bruce bruce yeah yeah, yeah he's a big fat black guy really funny bruce bruce it was the most awkward thing and you realize really early you re the audience is honest you're like this isn't gonna work yeah yeah and it's crazy too uh he has a black audience though like our audience yeah our audience a lot of people you know, they assume that we have a black audience, but I would say 70% of our audience is white, Asian, Hispanic, and then I would say 5% black. Yeah. yeah, well, after the DNA test, maybe you'll get it up to six. All right, <laughs> so people want to like, you know what? I, I was wrong about them, man. I was wrong. I'm rethinking my whole life's purpose. <laughs> Because of them DNA tests. All right. Uh, it is officialhodgetwins.com. And they have some good training advice over there, too. I know you're, you're, you're inundated with YouTube now with just a bunch of horrible training tips from people who are loaded to the juice, loaded to the gills with juice, but they swear that they're not. Uh, you can follow them yeah, at they're... Hodge Twins. Hey, it's, I didn't even go. I, know, I don't know which one's Keith, which one's Kevin. Thank you, guys. Keith. And, well, yeah. it, let's be honest. You're interchangeable at this point. And come, <laughs> <laughs> come back soon, I guys, okay? Hey, before you let us go, we're gonna stand a pledge of allegiance. A pledge of allegiance. Do you actually do you know it? This country. Some people have no risk. See, there. he does, he was like, okay, he's looking for an out. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give you the out and play that music. We'll let him, we'll let him come back next time and do the pledge of allegiance. That's how we'll leave it. <laughs> hey, did you enjoy this video? Here's the thing. You're all, you're here. This is the end of the. So we don't care because you already watched it. But if you really didn't like it and you want to justify it, leave a comment below telling us why you didn't like the video. And if you liked us, let us know. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Because that lets the overlords at YouTube know that, uh, you know what? You're all right.